Christopher Fitzgerald is a delivery boy in a Cork store. He is 15, works five and a half days a week, cycles about 40 miles in that time, and is paid over the official rate of 59 shillings. On one of these days, he goes to school. This he must do if he lives within the cities of Cork, Limerick, or Waterford, because he has not yet reached the state-prescribed school leaving age. He has no choice, neither do his parents nor employers. They are compelled to see he continues his schooling on one day each week. It's in his own interest because his is a dead-end job he knows won't last more than a few years, and by then he won't want it anyway. So he joins hundreds of others his own age, employed in various jobs, going to a vocational school that helps bridge the gap. Or does it merely mark time? Does a school such as this serve a useful purpose, or is it just an expensive waste of time and money? Cork City Vocational Education Committee CEO, Mr Paddy Parfrey, has had these accusations levelled at him down through the years, but he defends the scheme vigorously. But, Mr Parfrey, there can be very few benefits educationally in a one-day system. Well, I don't agree with that at all. Uh, as regards the cost of these courses and uh, whether money is obtained for the expenditure, the sum involved is about £20,000 per annum. The number of students covered, about 1,000. The cost works out at about £20 per student per annum. In my opinion, the value received is more than proportionate to the expenditure involved. What do the students get? They don't get what they would get if they were attending whole time at a school, but at least they get one whole day and they get continuation education, or in other words, general education. Since Cork was nominated to pioneer this scheme, it's been running here for 30 years almost. Do you think in that time the scheme has justified itself? The, the point I would make in, in reply to that is this. Uh, the one day a week gives the students an ordered, disciplined routine for at least one day out of the seven. They meet teachers, they attend regular classes, and in particular they're in daily contact with the priest teachers. Now, no matter what amount of education that they obtain, uh, you can say this at least, that whatever literacy they had when they came to us, and some of them had very little, at least they maintain that amount and add to it. It's quite well known that the employers have been objecting to this scheme for a long, long time. The um, opposition of employers isn't as great now as it was in the past. Uh, the scheme has been accepted in Cork. We get a full attendance at the classes. As a matter of fact, you may be surprised to hear that the average attendance uh, throughout the year is 90%. And um, employers now, I think, as well as the general public, realize that young people at 14 years of age to 16 years of age are not merely producers. They are young people who need education. Possibly the ideal way to measure education is to decide how many will seek further ed education after this. Now, in these terms, has this been a success at all? Well, you get a small percentage who do go to whole-time classes, who, who in fact leave the um, one-day week and take up whole-time classes. And you get students who come to night classes. When they raise the school leaving age to 15, will the whole business lapse? If students get a full year extra on general education, the necessity for the part-time education for two years between 14 and 16 will not be as great as it was before that. Teachers face a difficult job at all times, but possibly more so at these one-day-a-week schools. They must face the fact that their pupils are reluctant ones to some extent, something Headmaster Padrigo Dalla acknowledges as a problem. Mr. Podrigo Dollar, do you find that as boys are compelled to go to school that there's a great reluctance in their part to learn? I wouldn't say there's a great reluctance in their part to learn. There is some reluctance, but the reluctance is only in the initial stages. It wears off gradually, pardon me, as they get an interest in their work. But is your course practical enough for the boys? Well, it's practical in this way, that, that many of these boys come with a very um, inadequate education wish to put it like that. Their, um, their writing is poor and their spelling and their in, even their speech is poor. We also try to improve their diction if possible and um, we allow them to proceed at their own pace. Am I right in thinking Mr O'Dolly that there's something wrong with the primary education system when boys can come to a school such as yours 
so ignorant. We have a number of, of boys whose education is inadequate, as I said, and that is the result of overcrowding in the primary schools. It's not the fault of the teachers. They're doing a wonderful job, I think. Your school does seem to have a comprehensive involvement in the boys' lives, even if they come here only on one day a week. You have, I know, an employment bureau, and you're involved in social work with the boys as well. Yes, that's true. They, they come to school directly from their places of employment to us, and they go back again to those places after school. And uh, the school then is for one day a week. And we also try to tie up the um, instruction we give with the type of employment the boys have. Is it your intention, Mr O'Dolly, to get employment for these boys, or are you concerned with the type of employment they get? Well, this thing varies. At the beginning of a session, we are inundated with calls from employers who want boys, you see. Because during the summer, uh, of course, the boys from the national schools who are under 14 take on these jobs as summer work. But all these boys have to go back to national school in September, and then the employers are left without boys, and they apply to us immediately to fill the gap. One time a boy would take any kind of job here, but now he's, he's rather careful, and he might turn down an offer of a, what would appear to me to be a fairly good job. With the girls, the position is somewhat different. Headmistress Mrs Eileen Quinlan knows that many of her schoolgirls of one day a week are young women for the other six. Mrs Eileen Quinlan, as headmistress in the scheme, what problems do you face by the fact that your pupils are young women? for six days of the week and schoolgirls for one? Well, I don't find that that uh, constitutes a very big problem because um, the attendance of school for one day in the week helps to bridge a rather difficult gap in the life of these girls when they've left full-time school at 14 and uh, before they become full-time workers at 16. Mrs Quinlan, is it your approach to teach these pupils everything a girl should know? Well, yes. Principally, the uh, program is geared to uh, help them in their future role as homemakers. Uh, the emphasis is mainly on practical <coughs> subjects. They do cookery, laundry, uh, dressmaking, religious instruction, and uh, then a short period of Irish and English. Now, your girls very obviously go out into the world much earlier than many other girls, and they dance a lot and all that. Is there a specific concentration on sex education at this school? Well, no, not um, uh, sex education as such, but the, these girls have an opportunity when they meet their chaplain here every week of uh, discussing their little problems and uh, asking questions. They have a question box where they can get an opportunity of discussing their particular problems during this very particular, rather difficult period in their lives uh, from 14 to 16. No matter what plans are formulated, no matter how dedicated the teaching, the success or failure of a scheme such as this is dependent on the pupils, the boy on the bicycle and hundreds like him.